Welcome to our presentation on the use of modern technology to enhance traditional teaching techniques. In our video, we will cover some apps and websites that teachers can use to reinforce and enhance their teaching. These apps and websites will help you teach theory, ear training, sight reading, and musicality. The second part of our presentation will focus on the hardware that teachers can use to um, make teaching from home better for their students and themselves. We will give an overview of various affordable USB microphones, how to set up cameras for your studio, and various sound and video editing softwares. All of this hardware and software will help you to adapt traditional teaching techniques to fit the demands of modern society. Now we're going to check out hooktheory.com. This is a great website to reinforce theory concepts with your students after the lessons. It's also great for students that are more interested in popular music. Um, or if you have a student that comes in, I believe every piano teacher has felt the dread when a student comes in and says, oh my gosh, I just heard this lovely song on the radio. <clears throat> Would you help me figure it out? And uh, if it's a popular song, this website likely has it on here. Um, so rather than using valuable minutes of the lesson time, you can have things ready to go and be able to help the student. They offer three products if you're curious or you're interested in spending money. Hookpad Musical Sketchpad is basically a music notation software at a very basic level. <clears throat> it allows you to create your own um, combinations of chords and melodies. Uh, which we'll check out a little bit in a minute. Interactive Hook Theory Books, um, they have some books that they've written if you're curious about that. And then they also have a classroom app uh, which offers teaching modules and other things if you would like to use this in a um, classroom setting. Now let's check out what's free and available on the website. Um, those products we just discussed are here. Um, so the different resources they have, we'll just go through them one by one. The Learning Lab is something interesting that they've put together with a bunch of instructional videos on how to use their uh, products. So they have the Hook Pad, which is that music notation software, different songwriting tutorials, <clears throat> piano voicing, and different analysis. Uh, we won't get into that too much here because uh, there are some more interesting things that we can look at. This next tab uh, under resources is the trends tab, which is a pretty cool feature. So this is a way that you and uh, more likely the student or whatever students you're teaching can explore chord progressions or harmony. And so what it does is you select these little balls here on the left. And as you select, so starts us off in the key of C, although there's a little note at the bottom that says everything is basically transposed to the same key. So it's more or less thinking of them in terms of function. Um, so if we start with C, then we'll notice in terms of the song database that they have, the most common chord progression uh, that follows is then F or G, A minor, D minor, and then you can select other chords if you'd like. They have some different inversion chords, some seven chords, things like this. And then say we go C to F, gives us another set of options. Um, back to G, and maybe back to C. So very simple progression. And then it gives us a bunch of songs that use that progression. It may not necessarily be one, four, five, one. It could be something like uh, five, one, two, five. Um, so as long as the function remains the same, um, it has that. So let's check out this particular example. We can click on The Sims season two and notice not necessarily right away here, um, but here we have the one, four, five, one, and then you can get a little bit of a sample.
we go. So and it may not necessarily be the whole song, but within that song is located that progression. Um, so that is a pretty cool feature. <clears throat> Another resource that they have is their song database, which is very useful if you if you are wanting to help your student learn a song that they've heard before, or if you want to challenge them to um, notate a song or transcribe a song. Um, they can use this to check their work. They have a lot of popular songs, as you can see, Beatles, Taylor Swift song, Game of Thrones. Um, you can go up here and search something, and we could try something by, oh, I don't know, um, Jimi Hendrix. And they have quite a few things here all along the watchtower. And if you click on it, it gives you the progression. There must be some and I won't play too much of it just to try to avoid any copyright issues. Um, but it gives you the progressions and the sound sample, key, all these different things. Um, it'll even show you the piano version of it as well, with the chords on the piano. They also have this dictation challenge, which, to be honest, from my experience, hasn't been a very effective way of teaching dictation. Um, they have different levels, beginner, intermediate, advanced. Um, so, for example, we would listen. So lots of A flats in there and then the G and so forth. But I found it's very difficult to um, notate the duration or the rhythm of the sound. Um, so it's kind of uh, not the most effective thing. But it does train the ear to some degree, which is good. Um, the other thing that they have are a forum for any questions or needs that you may have. And then let's check out their musical sketch pad. So this is what they call the hook pad. Everything else here in the newsletter blog is not terribly important to us. Um, and then about and support, also not very important. But this hook pad um, is interesting. I guess there is a paid version. You can also mess around with it for free. And so this is a great way uh, to encourage your students to compose their own music. Um, especially if they're interested in more popular things. Um, notice, say, we could create something. Give a little progression there. Um, you can also make loops. You can record the song. You can hear what it sounds like if we play it. Uh, we have to adjust our slider bar, but anyways. Um, they have different inversions you can choose from. You can even choose from popular progressions, bass sets, different tone sets. You can see what's popular. Um, it kind of falls in line with that progression explorer that we looked at earlier. Uh, over here on the right side, the students can adjust different chord properties. So you can have just basic triads. You could have 11 chords, 9 chords, 13 chords. Um, you can also have alterations to those chords. So we can have a flat 5 chord, add 13, something like this. Um, which, you know, just increases the complexity of the sound. Um, you can also do some borrowing from the different modes and things like this. So this is an excellent way to kind of incorporate all of the theoretical ideas that you may be talking about in a lesson. Um, to having them actually create something of their own um, and put those ideas to use rather than just kind of thinking of them as a boring academic exercise. So this is hooktheory.com, and I hope that you will check this out more with your students as well as it is a pretty interesting resource. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at musictheory.net. Um, this is a website that is an excellent tool to reinforce 
traditional uh, methods of instruction related to theory. Um, a good foundation in theory is always an excellent thing for a piano student to have. And there are a lot of different options nowadays in terms of apps and online sources. Uh, we find that this, musictheory.net, um, is probably one of the best, most well-organized and easy to access. Um, this is their online <clears throat> website. They do have two apps that are downloadable, um, which contain most of the content which they have online. The Theory Lessons app, uh, both of them are $2.99 on the App Store, the Tenuto. Lessons basically discuss the different aspects of theory, note naming, chord identification, scale identification. And then the Tenuto app is more of the practical application of identifying intervals, identifying scales, identifying pitches on the keyboard. So let's check out the online website, uh, which is again free and very easy, straightforward to use. They have, uh, on the top here, they have a section for lessons, um, and they start anything from the basics of notes on the staff, durations, time signatures, ties. Um, so let's check out with one of these, what one of these look like. Um, so that you can see that this would be a great way for a student to go back and reinforce what they learned in their lesson in regards to learning notes on the staff. There's a little play button down here, which will skip through the text. Notice it has the lines and the spaces. Gives you a visual for the keyboard. Introduction to clefs. And again, I'm just clicking the little play button down there at the bottom. And then there are audio examples if you click here with the microphone. And then the note on the line above A is B. And so forth. Um, the lessons go from basic to pretty advanced. So for example, um, They even have lessons about some jazz chords. So different types of seven chords, the minor major seven chord. So it gives the descriptor, gives the visual, the notes on the keyboard, an explanation of to how it's constructed. And then again, the audio example. There's also some uh, more compositional things, such as voicing of chords that are discussed. So for example, these different voicings. And then even things such as Neapolitan chords, um, they have non-chord tones, um, some sample analysis for the students to follow along with. So this will be a great way to reinforce the theoretical aspects of um, what your student is playing. So now let's check out some of the online exercises they have on this website. Um, they all follow very much in line with uh, their lessons, but these are things that the student can use to practice with at home on their own. For example, our note identification. The student just clicks that's A, G flat, and if they get one wrong, say this is C sharp, uh, it lets them choose again until they get the right answer. And of course, they could just go through until they get it right, but that's on theirs. 
Um, other interesting things in the exercises section are they relate these this theory to the keyboard. Um, so for example, this exercise, you see the note on the page, and I know this doesn't really deal with the octaves, but then you can play the note on the keyboard. At least the pitch is correct. Um, and again, if you get one wrong, it gives you the chance to retry it until you get it right, which is quite useful. Um, one of the best tools for practice, I believe, is some of their ear training. Um, a lot of times ear training can get overlooked, especially when teaching online lessons. You think it could be difficult to incorporate, um, especially for some interval ear training. Um, and what's great about the trainings is if you go to the little widget on the top right corner, you can customize the exercises. So instead of working with all of the different intervals, you can select specific ones that you want to practice or you want your students to practice. Um, and notice that it runs pretty much the whole gamut. It can go all the way up to 14s. So say we just wanted to practice the difference between major thirds and perfect fifths, for example. And then we can come back here. You can change the play mode, whether you want them ascending, descending, harmonic intervals, or a combination of the two. Um, you can choose the playback speed. You can change instruments. Say you are you had a trumpet player and wanted to practice the trumpet sound. There you go. Um, you can change the range. So C3 to C5, however high or low you want to practice. And you can change how quickly the questions change. So notice now our options are quite a bit reduced. And again, it's the same type of... If you get it wrong, it lets you choose again. And it keeps track for you up there at the top as to what your score is. Uh, now, for teachers, another great way of utilizing this website is to come down here in the For Teachers section, and you can customize um, specific exercises for your students. And then this website will create a link um, that you can email or text to your students um, for that particular exercise. So let's check that out now. We'll go to the exercise customizer. Um, and we just happen to be in the keyboard ear training portion. Um, you can select whatever keys you want, reference note, um, speed, how fast you want it to be played, instrument range, and so forth. And then if you'll notice this little um, URL down here at the bottom, if we click that, it gives us our exercise. And this particular exercise is just playing the notes on the keyboard. And then, so you can copy this link and send it to your students. And then they can also show progress reports. So this little verification code here, if you type in your initials, It will generate a report for your training. And this little link here, or copy the code here. And then for this little code checker, if you put in the code, it will give the progress report for whatever student was practicing those exercises. So this is a very valuable tool uh, that you can kind of check in on your students and make sure that they're doing these 
assigned weekly um, theory trainings that you ask them to do. And this was an ear training exercise. You can set up these exercises for note identification. Um, you can practice key signatures, any of the basic theory concepts that we covered before. So this is a good overview of musictheory.net. Um, I hope you find it useful. Even if you knew about the website, maybe you didn't know about necessarily all of the features or exercises that were available to you. So this is an app called Piano Marvel, and it has a lot of great features, mainly that you can play along with piece, and it tells you uh, which notes you played correctly and which ones you played wrong. It shows you exactly which notes you played with uh, red dots if you played them wrong and green dots if you played them correctly. So here's the main, uh, main screen. You've got a library with thousands of pieces linked to Hal Leonard and FJH or upload, uploads of your own music. Um, it has a sight reading feature which you can uh, test yourself and notice your progress throughout the year. Uh, they created that by having um, students from all ages and professors and um, gave them hundreds of pieces to play. And if they couldn't pass um, a certain piece with 80% accuracy, um, then that stopped you and, and you got your final score. So it goes all the way from early beginner all the way through doctoral student and beyond. And so the main, however, feature that we use in our class is the method and the technique. Um, so I'll take you to that trophy case. You can see it starts on the bottom left with 1A, and there are 20 exercises, starting with very basics, middle C, and getting harder. And then the technique trophy case has 20 accompanying exercises that um, fortify the lesson in, in each method. So it goes, there are 1,200 exercises just in this part alone, besides all of the repertoire in the library and the sight reading portion. So let me just show you how it works. Um, I'll start with method and I'll start out with whole notes. And then it's everything's on middle C just for the first few exercises as it introduces half notes and quarter notes, eventually eighth notes. And gradually it introduces more notes, A and D, or sorry, uh, a, B, C, C and D, C and B, um, and by the time you get to, I'll go up to 6E, uh, these are what some of the harder ones, uh, it's, it's comparable to any method book. So here, I'll just show you a little portion. One, two, set, go. I just hit some keys so you could see all the ones I played correctly are green. At the end you see I mess up and it shows all the red notes. If I had finished all the way to the end, um, you would see then a final score. So you notice that this is kind of a long piece and uh, I don't think that students are going to necessarily sight read this by the time they get to this point. So there are great features uh, to prepare you for that. The first one is the prepare button and this is, you're playing out of rhythm. It's just um, matching the notes so you just get the hang of where you're at and it kind of gives you an estimate for how how well prepared you are but on the bottom right there are other features too like the control panel you can um, turn down the accompaniment you could turn up the metronome um, you can also turn down the sound of the piano, um, there's like a digital piano if, and you don't need to have that going. You can also slow down the speed um, and then the practice mode is what is I think the best. So you can put uh, divide the piece into minced sections, chopped and whole. And what this does is minced sections takes it like two to four measures at a time, hands separately, slow, medium, fast. So it gives you a little section here uh, just the intro, playing the right hand alone, and then uh, when you finish that, you go to the next 
I think that's just the faster speed. And then it goes to speed faster. And then after that, it takes you to the left hand. And that's slow and then medium fast. And so you can go through all of those exercises. It basically teaches you to practice for you, you know, in sections, hands separately, slow, medium, fast. And then you can take it up to doing larger sections and finally getting to the whole. So by that point, you pretty much are able to play the whole piece by sight reading it. Uh, highly recommend it. Um, so the way to connect to it is with a MIDI cable to iPad or with a Bluetooth adapter. So Yamaha produces those. Uh, I really prefer the direct cable, but you have to have MIDI hookups on the keyboard. So a lot of new keyboards only have USB, um, So in which case you have to use a Bluetooth thing from Yamaha. And that doesn't always connect well to the app, so you have to get a separate app. Uh, I use Yamaha Chord Tracker, go to the settings and, and hook it up, which in a classroom setting can be a little bit annoying uh, at the beginning of the year, trying to you know get everyone to figure out how to troubleshoot and stuff. Um, but I think it's worth it. Um, my classes, you know, from previous years when I didn't have this compared to now, uh, my classes now can read music so much better because uh, the biggest thing is playing with rhythm. And when I was teaching, you know, piano lab with a hundred new beginners, um, or maybe you know two thirds of them hadn't hadn't played piano. Um, that's the struggle is they need to be told sometimes, you know, to play with rhythm and stay on the beat. That's that's one of our biggest struggles. So this kind of takes care of a lot of that. And there are 1,200 um, carefully graded uh, exercises to help them build that skill. So one look just at the library. You can download pieces and per or purchase pieces or upload pieces. Um, and you can sort them by difficulty as well as by genre. Um, and so it's just such a great app. I highly recommend it. Um, I know Piano Marvel, or sorry, uh, Piano Adventures, favorite Piano Adventures, has a similar app that goes along with its, uh, with its lesson books, its, uh, its series. And it's the same thing. You can play along with it. Um, but I just find this has so much variety. I found it's like $15 a month per student. Um, however, they do have like institution and group pricing. So I would definitely look into that. Um, and you, oh, also there's reports. So you can check how much your students practice per week. You can check uh, if you have classes, you can sort it by class and see how many minutes each class practiced. Uh, you can see how many trophy, trophy is, how many points or how many levels they passed. Uh, they have different challenges, the staycation challenge, Christmas challenge, song of the week, Dennis Alexander challenge. So they really, uh, there's also a competition they did last year um, that a bunch of my students entered. So they're really on top of their game. Uh, they just went and um, re, they did another project uh, with a bunch of pianists to uh, readjust their sight reading uh, test to make sure it's uh, all, all good. And they also changed the, the look of the app so the music is uh, easier to read. Um, it's an awesome app overall, and I recommend it. All right, now we're going to check out some sound and video editing software. Um, these programs are great if you want to start to put your students' recitals online, if you want to make some lessons for them online, if you would like to start a YouTube channel, this kind of thing. Um, I selected four free video editing softwares and one sound editing, sound editing software. Um, the first one I recommend is called Shotcut. It's very popular, free to use, works on Mac or PC. Uh, the user interface is well designed, and a lot of people use this to edit their videos. You can find it at shotcut.org. Another good option is called DaVinci Resolve 16, also free to use. It's a little bit more advanced than Shotcut, um, and you do need a slightly more powerful PC to run, but it's a great program, very user friendly. This is what it looks like here. Your project would be here, the video, timeline here, which you can change the clips, adjust as you need. They have a mixer over here for sound. You can do different transitions, titles, text, different effects, all very nice. 
Another popular video editing software is called VSDC. You can get it at videosoftdev.com. Um, this one is, again, very intuitive, has some nice advanced features, and they do have a paid version, which is around $20, um, that you can get all the features that you could ever want. The last free software for video editing is um, HitFilm Express. They do have HitFilm Pro, which is quite expensive, um, but this HitFilm Express does just about everything those other apps do. Um, I, do I did read that it takes a higher grade system to run, um, but it does work well if you have a nice computer. If you want to get more advanced, you can check out Adobe Premiere. This is basically the professional video editing software. It does cost money, however. Um, I believe it's $52.99 a month, yes. But with that $52, you get Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, Premiere, all these different programs as well. Um, but from what I've read, these free applications and software do just pretty much the same thing as Adobe. If you only are looking for a sound editing software, I highly recommend Audacity. You can find it at audacityteam.org. You can record straight to it. You can change the type of audio file, mess around with sound quality. You can edit your tracks, different effects, and you can also slow down music if you're trying to transcribe something and it doesn't change the pitch, it just keeps the pitch the same. Uh, the user interface looks like this. And with any of these programs, if one of them caught your eye, the best way to get started with them is to download them and to go to YouTube and just search basic tutorials on these programs. There are tons of them and it's an excellent resource. So now we're moving to uh, talking about the microphones. Um, first, I want to start to um, talk about the basics for microphones. There are uh, some terms that may help you to you know, figure out which kind you, you wanted to use. Uh, first, there are three types of microphones. The first type is called dynamic microphone. They're used for loud sounds, um, better with live instruments. Uh, there's some pros and cons with this type of microphone. First, uh, dynamic microphone tends to be cheaper, uh, more durable, uh, doesn't need a power source. Uh, cons, they're not very sensitive to quiet or high frequency sounds. Um, however, this this type of mic best when used close to the source. Uh, not good with the more subtle stuff, of course. Um, so the next type is called condenser microphone. They used for um, quieter, uh, more complex sounds with a greater range of frequencies. Uh, pros, they are sensitive, um, more accurate to the original sound. Uh, cons, they're more expensive, more delicate, uh, don't deal well with very loud sounds. Um, ribbon mics, uh, they're the, the ones that you actually probably more familiar with. They're the traditional type. They make the top end sweet and musical, the low end rich and usable, um, and then the this type of mic use figure eight in patterns. So what is the microphone patterns? Um, if you look at this slide, I have uh, included a picture on the slide and show you kind of like the range for the different type. There are four different types. Uh, they're very common. The first one is called um, cardioid. Uh, they kind of like a, you know, a fan that coming from the tip of the mic. Uh, they're good for picking up uh, sound in the front. Uh, super cardioid is similar uh, type of uh, use similar type of pattern. However, uh, you you can see from the uh, slide they pick up um, mainly from the front, also a little bit from the back. So they uh, have a tighter pickup area. 
compared to cardioid. Um, the next type is called omnidirectional. This type uh, of um, microphone, as you can see, they pick up sound all around from everywhere. So you can basically stand anywhere um, uh, against a, you know, the microphone. And figure eight is the type that put the mic in the center of the eight and they can pick up audio from everything in the front and in the back as well. Very useful in rejecting sound that you don't want coming in and from the side. And now I'm going to show you uh, some uh, microphone. First is um, this type is called um, Miracle Sound Microphone. Uh, this is microphone that you can clip on your clothes and then record sound directly. Um, and you can actually plug this in, this side in, because this is um, 3.5 mm uh, audio jack uh, it works with iphone uh, and smart any type of smartphones or tablet device the next one i'm going to show you is uh, universal video microphones those are the same kind however this one has a mount that you can attach it on the um, mounted up and it's about 40 dollar range um, they're small and light design, and then they have a 3.5 mm input. You can actually uh, hook it up with um, phones, but you need this little adapter to hook it up with um, phones. So you can attach it. Uh, I have this mount here, and the phone is right here, and then you can plug this side in. and then mount this up like this. And this also works with uh, DSLRs, uh, those type of camera. And I can show you quickly how that works. With those camera that you open the side and there's a 3.5 mm uh, audio jack here and then you mount this up like this. The next microphone uh, is called Snowball microphone. Uh, it actually comes with a USB cable and a microphone stand. This microphone is a little bit pricey. It's about $119. Is a USB condenser mic. Uh, the brand I have is uh, called Blue Snowball. Uh, I have an older model. It's a Blue Snowball Ice. Uh, the the model um, that you can find on Amazon uh, is is called uh, just called Snow Blue Snowball, and it has more functions actually. Uh, so this is a professional studio quality microphone record both vocals and instruments and you can uh, use this with my uh, Mac or PC system and the, the newer model actually has a unique two uh, capsule design uh, on the back as you can see from the slide there's a picture there on the back there is a switch so you can change the mic patterns uh, so they can they have two design. Uh, one is the omnidirectional, uh, as you can see, the ball, um, you know, can pick up sound in the front and around. Um, so you can speak basically all the way around the microphone, and can the microphone can pick up audio 360 uh, degrees. Uh, with the switch on the back, you can have um, a change to cardioid. Uh, patterns so that kind of um, pattern of work well with uh, audio that's in in front of it 
This next uh, microphone is an um, Audio-Technica dynamic microphone. Uh, the price range is around um, from $109 to $129. Uh, the one I have is AT2005, so that's the cheaper one, uh, costs $109. There's one that you can purchase on Amazon, is AT2100. Uh, so this microphone uh, is ideal for live performance or home studio recording or podcasting. It uh, uses uh, cardioid polar patterns. So this type of mic uh, will be good to pick up audio in front of it. Uh, it reduces pickup of unwa unwanted sounds from the size and rear. Uh, this microphone has a very unique design so on the back you can uh, see it has a USB cable that you can plug into the computer and also have a um, XLR output that you can um, plug it in and then connect it to the sound system uh, uses conventional microphone input um, and used for live performance of course and on top of that, you can actually plug in uh, a headphone and you can use it to monitor and control the sound as you're recording. So that's the benefit of this. Um, I have a, also a MXL condenser microphone to show you. This one uh, is an older my model. Um, that I purchased several years ago, but um, now you can actually find a newer model on Amazon. It's about a hundred dollar, uh, and this uh, is a uh, cardioid condenser microphone. Uh, this type of microphone will reduce the un unwanted ambient sound. Uh, this mic microphone use uh, with a mic uh, system or PC. Uh, works with computer music softwares programs and it has a uh, also the newer model has a 35 mm uh, headphone jack just like the other headphone that we I showed you so you can use the headphone to monitor uh, the um, vocal and instrument sound quality as you're recording uh, and actually with uh, this link uh, that you can click on uh, this mic, you can buy it actually, they come with a high quality headphones and also a USB cable and a desk desktop tripod stand. Next, I'm going to show you a professional tripod. This tripod actually works well with um, mounting it up on top of the piano. And as you can see, I have a DSLR camera here you can attach it uh, with this tripod here, like this. So it works also with uh, phones. I have, however, you will need this, this mount, this video rig mount. Uh, you can put the phone in the middle and of course, um, this side. And attach it. I have a microphone that also works. Microphone also works with the phone like this. This type of tripod, this is uh, called KNF Concept model, is TM two five three four T. It's about a hundred twenty six dollar. It's a little bit pricey, but I think it worth uh, the investment. It's actually. Um, has this um, special design. It can turn um, 
360 degree. It's pretty tight right here, but this one, you can rotate it like this. So you can adjust your angle and also this middle part, uh, you can you can turn it. Um, now let's talk about camera options. So for uh, cameras, of course, you can use your uh, laptop. Um, nowadays, laptop usually come with a web camera and a built-in um, like web camera and a microphone, and you can kind of like put it on the side and angle it uh, and use it with Zoom, of course, to uh, for teaching purpose. And um, another option is um, if you laptop doesn't come a building with a built-in uh, camera a microphone you can purchase one um, for a relative cheaper price about thirty dollar you can buy a pretty nice one uh, i have a link included in the powerpoint slide uh, if you're interested you can uh, check on that uh, and uh, of course um, you can also uh, use a smartphone uh, nowadays iphone uh, or any type of stuff smartphone comes with a pretty nice camera um, and then you can you know uh, dial in with your with with zoom on the phone and then uh, you can you know use a, uh, a phone holder like this and then just mount your cell phone or smartphone uh, like this and you can tighten it and then this would work with a tripod like this you can just Slide it in, and then angle it, and that gives you a pretty good uh, view of the entire keyboard. Uh, with this, this holder actually, if you don't like that angle, the cell phone holder also gives you an option of changing it to the side like this. This might work better actually with the keyboard. Um, and then you can do similar things. And you see with this tripod, the best thing is you can rotate it and then adjust the camera and that will give you a full uh, view of the keyboard of course so that's a, a very good option um, and then of course there's other options you can use a video camera um, or a GoPro camera and you see a GoPro camera like this uh, come with a cable and it has a USB plug-in and you can um, you know, connect it to your laptop on the side and, uh, and if you wanted to mount it, usually you can buy a, a case uh, that helps you to mount the GoPro camera or if you have a, of course this is a high quality uh, DSLR camera this camera uh, is about five hundred dollar uh, and there's more expensive models of course but um, this camera is kind of heavy so it may not be the best option but if you have one that uh, that you at home and if you're interested you can of course mount it uh, the same same way with this this camera that you can mount it over there and then this also comes with a USB cable. Uh, however, this cable uh, that's a little bit short, if you wanted to mount it over there, so you see you will need an uh, uh, extension cord. Uh, you can actually buy a USB extension cord uh, cable. That cord is called a male to a female adapter cord. Usually you can purchase it under $10, so it's relatively cheaper um, to get a cable like that. Um, and those are good options, but we find it really the best uh, way of, of uh, have a full view of your keyboard is to use uh, your cell phone um, and with Zoom works pretty well. 
Uh, next, I wanted to show off this uh, video camera. This is made by Zoom. It's Q8 uh, model and is a high definition video camera combined with a high quality audio recording device. So this camera has a wide angle 160 de degree lens and it actually featured with a four track of uh, audio recorders. Uh, you can select, you know, whether you want the four track and you can actually also adjust the uh, input. And also this um, camera come with a interchangeable microphone system, make it compatible with a variety of options. Uh, you know, you can actually plug in um, additional microphone if you want to use different ones here the uh, on the back you can see that uh, you can you know use different uh, kind of microphone that we talked about earlier and uh, this camera uh, feature with a stereo condenser microphone capsule well suited to capturing uh, live events, concerts, or videos of yourself playing with uh, studio, uh, studio quality sound. And this camera is about $450 uh, on Amazon. And I have included a link. Uh, you can check on it if you're interested. We hope that some of the websites, apps, software, and hardware that we have shown you will help you in your quest to include technology in your teaching. We believe that the resources we have shown will enhance the teaching of music and not distract from the core fundamentals that are vital to instill in our students. When it comes to technology, there are certainly limitless choices available and it can be difficult to find the correct solution. Hopefully you have gained something new that you will be able to use in your studio today. And thank you.